Hello everybody, this is Dr. Nadeem and we are with Neelam Path Lectures, the Pursue series. As you are aware, all our lectures are available on YouTube. We also have a Telegram group. You can join this group. It is very good for accessing all lecture related information. We have a Google Drive where the PDF of all lectures are available and a master integration key by which you can navigate between the Google Drive as well as the YouTube links. These are the disclaimers. We are with phase three, which is recorded pathology lecture. And today we have something very interesting. We have a lecture on endocrine pathology, which is Pursue 11C. The topic of the day is an update on the new classification of thyroid tumors, the WHO fifth edition. And to talk on that, we have Dr. Daphne Fonseca. She has been on the editorial board of the WHO Blue Book of Head and Neck, Endocrine, Neuroendocrine Tumors and Pediatric Tumors, fifth edition. So who better than Dr. Daphne to talk on that? She's done her MBBS from Kasturba Medical College, Mangalore, MD Pathology from Father Muller Medical College, Mangalore. She's also done a molecular training at the Tata Medical Center, Kolkata. Presently, she's a senior consultant pathologist at the famous Basa Vatakaram Indo-American Cancer Hospital and Research Institute, Hyderabad, Telangana. She has delivered many lectures, slide seminars, panel discussion in state and national forums authored and co-authored more than 50 publications in peer-reviewed journal. She's also a guide faculty to DNB residents and PDCC oncopathology residents, recipient of the best publication award at the Hyderabad Academy of Pathologists. So the right person for the right topic. So over to Dr. Daphne to Fonseca to talk on an update on the new classification of thyroid tumors. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, today I will give you all an update on the new classification of thyroid tumors, WHO 5th edition. Let us go through the evolution of classification of follicular derived tumors to understand how we reached to the 5th edition. In 1950s, thyroid carcinoma classification was simpler where it was classified by architecture as either papillary or follicular. It was Stuart Lindsay in 1960 who recognized the nuclear features of PTC in follicular lesions for the first time. Later, Shen and Rosai in 1977 defined follicular variant of PTC where the six cases they meticulously studied where all cases in their series were infiltrative. William and Rosai in 2000 devised the term well-differentiated tumor with uncertain malignant potential. With additional studies in the year 2000, it was clearer by Zhu et al. and Wiesman et al. in their papers that FVPTC was found to have molecular changes which are similar to follicular adenoma and follicular thyroid carcinoma and they are different from papillary thyroid carcinoma. Liu et al. in 2006 found out that behavior of non-invasive EFVPTC was similar to follicular adenoma, that is encapsulated follicular variants of PTC behaved very similar to follicular adenoma. With the TCGA, it was more clear that FVPTC is RAS related and has a distinct molecular profile, which is different from PTC, which has BRAF like molecular profile. In 2016, a landmark study published by a group of 31 international experts, including 24 endocrine pathologists, which investigated 109 patients with non-invasive encapsulated follicular variant PTCs with long-term follow-up of 10 to 26 years, where none of them received RAI ablation and all patients were still alive without disease recurrence. And then was proposed the term by Nikiforo et al. as non-invasive follicular thyroid neoplasm with papillary-like nuclear features, which has been incorporated in the fourth edition of WHO. The new classification has divided thyroid tumors into several new categories that allow 
for a clearer understanding of cell of origin, pathologic features, molecular classification and biological behavior. The thyroid gland gives rise to the most common endocrine tumors and it represents the largest chapter in the new 5th edition of WHO classification. I had the opportunity to be a part of the IARC editorial team and interact with the authors and editors of the WHO Blue Book 5th edition on endocrine and neuroendocrine tumors. So the table of contents in the new edition has the following sections as shown here in red. For the first time, there is inclusion of developmental abnormalities, which includes thyroglossal duxus and other congenital thyroid abnormalities. Follicular cell derived neoplasms are categorized under benign tumors, low risk neoplasms, malignant neoplasms. Thyroid follicular nodular disease has received consensus as a terminology to replace multi-nodular goiter which is a clinical term. Follicular thyroid adenoma with papillary architecture is a distinct entity. Hyalinizing trabecular tumor, non-invasive follicular thyroid neoplasm with papillary neck nuclei features and tumors of uncertain malignant potential are categorized as low risk neoplasms. Invasive encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma is a distinct entity. Poorly differentiated thyroid carcinoma is now considered a subtype of high-grade follicular cell-derived non-anaplastic thyroid carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma, which in the earlier edition was called as a variant, is now a subtype of anaplastic thyroid carcinoma. Ectopic thymoma, spindle epithelial tumor with thymus-like differentiation and intrathyroid thymic carcinoma are now all considered under thymic tumors within the thyroid. Thyroblastoma is a new entity introduced under embryonal thyroid neoplasms. Mesenchymal and stromal tumors, hematolymphoid tumors, germ cell tumors, metastasis, genetic tumor syndromes of all endocrine organs are described separately as different chapters in the new WHO 5th edition. Moving to benign tumors. Thyroid follicular nodular disease, follicular thyroid adenoma with papillary architecture and oncocytic adenoma of the thyroid. Thyroid follicular nodular disease. This is multifocal, non-inflammatory, benign proliferation of thyroid follicular cells which results in multiple clonal and non-clonal nodules with highly variable architecture. Multinodular goiter is a clinical term referring to an enlarged thyroid gland with multiple nodules. This entity is bio, biochemically euthyroid. So the essential diagnostic criteria for thyroid follicular nodular disease is follicular cell proliferations lacking invasive growth and nuclear features of papillary thyroid carcinoma. The desirable diagnostic criteria include an admixture of follicular and papillary growth patterns along with varying degrees of degenerative and reparative changes. So the morphologic criteria alone cannot always distinguish hyperplastic from neoplastic lesions. Proliferation of thyroid follicular cells with result in multiple clonal as well as non-clonal nodules with highly variable architecture. Hence, for any clinically enlarged multinodular thyroid gland, the term thyroid follicular nodular disease has received consensus, which could be hyperplasia or neoplasia as an appropriate term. Follicular thyroid adenoma with papillary architecture. Here, the essential diagnostic criteria is an encapsulated thyroid neoplasm composed of follicular epithelial cells with organized intrafollicular papillary architecture with subfollicle formation, broad papillae with edematous cores, absence of nuclear atypia, capsular renovation, and samoma bodies. These are often associated with autonomous hyperfunction. The rate of overt hyperthyroidism increases with the size of the adenoma and with iodine deficiency. Oncocytic adenoma of thyroid. In the new edition, there is encouragement to use the term oncocytic instead of herthal with an effort to do away with the eponyms. 
So the essential diagnostic criteria for oncocytic adenoma is a non-invasive encapsulated tumor with more than 75% oncocytic cells. Biochemically, these patients may be euthyroid and those follicular adenomas with oncocytic features but with less than 75 oncocytic cells are called as follicular adenoma with oncocytic features. Low risk neoplasms include non-invasive follicular thyroid neoplasm with papillary like nuclear features, thyroid tumors of uncertain malignant potential and hyalinizing trabecular tumor of thyroid. So the definition is it is a non-invasive encapsulated or well demarcated follicular cell derived tumor with a follicular growth pattern and nuclei resembling PTC that has an extremely low malignant potential. What is new in the fifth edition to NIFT-P is the inclusion of subtypes that is sub centimeter NIFT-P for a less than 10 mm NIFT-P and oncocytic NIFT-P with a NIFT-P which has at least 75% oncocytic cells. So essential diagnostic criteria for NIFT-P includes encapsulation or clear demarcation, follicular growth pattern with all of the following, less than 1% true papillae, no samoma bodies, less than 30% solid trabecular insula growth pattern, nuclear features of papillary carcinoma with a nuclear score of 2 to 3, no vascular or capsular invasion, no tumor necrosis, low mitotic count less than 3 mitosis per 2 mm square, lack of cytoarchitectural features of papillary carcinoma subtypes other than follicular that is tall cell features, solid, etc. The desirable diagnostic criteria includes immunohistochemistry or molecular testing for BRAF and NRAS mutation. Just a brief overview of the three point scoring criteria for the nuclear features of papillary thyroid carcinoma. We need to look at the size and shape where we see for the enlargement, nuclear elongation, crowding, overlapping, Nuclear membrane irregularities, including the irregular contours, grooves, folds, intranuclear cytoplasmic inclusion, depending on whether they are absent or present or well developed, score of 0 to 1, with one point for each feature is allotted. And the chromatin characteristics chromatin clearing, margination to the nuclear membrane, glassy nuclei, fine, even, delicate chromatin. So, total score of 0 or 1 is not diagnostic of PTC. And total score of 2 or 3 is diagnostic of PTC nuclei. Grossing recommendations for NIFT-P include submit the entire tumor capsule or tumor normal interface, three sections per centimeter of tumor. For large lesions, stepwise submission of sections, that is, limited number initially until invasion is found. Multiple sections can be submitted per block focusing on tumor periphery and its junction to the parenchyma. In the setting of multinodular disease, gross identification of FNA tract may be beneficial to capture the lesion of interest. NIFT-P including its oncocytic and subcentimeter form are extremely indolent neoplasms provided they are completely resectory. Even in our study done at our center, where we retrospectively analyzed our cases, we found that those which, those you know, follicular variant of PTC which fitted the criteria of NIFT-P had no follow-up and no recurrence till late. So what is the clinical pathological aspect and impact of NIFT-P? For pathologists, there are, what we need to do extensive review of the tumor capsule, follow the strict inclusion and exclusion criteria that we just discussed, use the term consult the clinician. For clinician, they need to consult the patient, de-escalate the treatment regime, staging is not required, also profile like the central neck lymph node dissection is not required. And for patient, it is elimination of the psychological impact of cancer diagnosis, reduction of complications of total thyroidectomy, reduction of risk of secondary tumors following RAI therapy, and reduction of overall healthcare cost. Moving to tumors of uncertain malignant potential. So to define, these are well differentiated thyroid tumors with follicular architecture that are encapsulated or unencapsulated but well circumscribed in which invasion remains questionable after thorough sampling and exhaustive examination. Subtypes include 
FD UMP and WDT UMP. So that is follicular tumor of uncertain malignant potential. But tumor cells have regular round nuclei that lack the nuclear features of PTC with a nuclear score of 0 to 1. In well differentiated tumor of uncertain potential, malignant potential, the tumor cell nuclei have PTC type nuclear alterations with a nuclear score of 2 to 3. So the essential diagnostic criteria is questionable invasion. That is the feature of concern. That is invasion of vessels and or of the tumor capsule must be specified. No pseudo-invasive artifacts included induced by FNA or surgical manipulation and no high-grade morphology. So in the photomicrograph seen here, questionable capsular invasion includes an irregular protrusion of tumor cells into the fibrous capsule, casting doubt as to the completeness of its penetration. Questionable vascular invasion, where tumor cells with PTC type nuclear alterations closely intermixed with vascular spaces of the tumor capsule. The risk of recurrence or metastasis is extremely low for uncapsulated follicular pattern tumors where invasion of tumor capsule is the only concern. Hyalinizing trabecular tumor. This entity comprises less than 1% of thyroid neoplasms. It has a strong female predominance with more than 80% of cases being diagnosed in females at a mean age of 50 years. What is characteristic in virtually all cases of hyalinizing trabecular tumor is the detection of the gliss fusions. Clinically, they are benign and complete excision is generally curative. Essential diagnostic criteria for hyalinizing trabecular tumor is follicular cell differentiation. Pure trabecular architecture with intratrabecular hyalinization and nuclear features characterized by prominent grooves, vacuoles, and membrane irregularities. Desirable diagnostic criteria includes membranous KI67 with a MIB1 clone when done at room temperature and detection of GLIS1 rearrangements. Moving to malignant neoplasms. We have papillary thyroid carcinoma, invasive encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma, follicular thyroid carcinoma, oncocytic carcinoma of the thyroid, high-grade follicular cell-derived non-anaplastic thyroid carcinoma, anaplastic follicular cell-derived thyroid carcinoma. Papillary thyroid carcinoma is a malignant tumor of follicular cell derivation characterized by distinct nuclear features and a PTC diagnosis requires either papillary or solid trabecular architecture or invasive growth in follicular patterned tumors. I'll take you through the subtypes of PTC. And at this juncture, I want to draw your attention to the term subtype, which is replaced in the entire new WHO in all the blue books instead of the term variant in order to avoid confusion with the term genetic variants. So PTC subtypes, the classic or the conventional PTC, here we see papillae and the classic nuclear features. Encapsulated PTC, here classic PTC is enveloped by a thick fibrous capsule which may be intact or infiltrated by tumor without extrathyroidal extension. Infiltrative follicular PTC, here there is follicular growth pattern with PTC nuclear features, prominent samoma bodies and stromal fibrosis may be seen. WLPTC or Wharton-like PTC, here papillae are lined by oncocytic cells with the papillary cores rich in lymphocytes and plasma cells. It almost always occurs in a background of well-developed to severe chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis or Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Clear cell PTC is another subtype where cell, clear cells grow in papillae or solid sheets and often show typical PTC nuclei. Spindle cell PTC, where more than 50% of spindle cells with nuclear features of PTC are seen. To continue with the subtypes, oncocytic PTC, here well-developed papillae and rare follicles are seen all lined by oncocytic cells with nuclear features of PTC. Solid PTC, 
this subtype there is solid trabecular or nested growth pattern in more than 50% of the tumor mass but please note there is lack of tumor necrosis and high mitotic rate hobnail subtype of ptc here tumor cells have enlarged nuclei that bulge from the apical surface diffuse sclerosing subtype of ptc there is solidness and papillary formation with squamous metaplasia extensive lymphatic permeation dense sclerosis numerous summa bodies and associated chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis ptc with fibromatosis or fasciitis like or desmoid type stroma here abundant cellular stroma tumor cells embedded within the stroma usually form cords tubules compressed papillae and show nuclear features of ptc tall cell subtype of ptc here 30% of more of the ptc cells should have height at least 3 times their width and show abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm with a prominent cell membrane columnar cells with pale eosinophilic to clear cytoplasm prominent nuclear pseudostratification subnuclear vacuoles may be present in columnar subtype of ptc so why is it essential that we subtype ptc histologically that is because subtypes like classic ptc encapsulated ptc warthin like ptc clear cell ptc and diffuse sclerosing ptc have an excellent prognosis compared to the other subtypes like diffuse solid trabecular tall cell hobnail and columnar cell ptc which have poor prognosis braf v600 600e mutation is the most common mutation seen among all ptcs with the prevalence being highest in tall cell ptc when a braf v600e ihc is performed to be considered positive the staining should be cytoplasmic and diffuse throughout the tumor almost more than or equal to 90% staining Although molecular markers are not currently recommended for the post-operative prognostication and management of PTC, they can provide valuable targets for those PTC refractory to conventional treatment protocols. Something new about PTC in the current WHO classification is subcentimetric PTC. So it is not a distinct subtype like earlier we had papillary microcarcinoma. but now the name just implies the size the new classification requires subtyping of papillary microcarcinomas example papillary carcinoma classic subtype microscopic and mention the size moving to invasive encapsulated follicular variant of papillary carcinoma essential diagnostic criteria is minimally invasive and encapsulated angio invasive fvptc and we have widely invasive fvptc so firstly i'll tell you the essential diagnostic criteria for minimally invasive and encapsulated angio invasive fvptc here encapsulated tumor with an exclusive or almost exclusive follicular architecture nuclear features of ptc and capsular and or vascular invasion may be seen in widely invasive fvptc grossly apparent invasive growth and histologically characterized by an exclusive or almost exclusive follicular architecture with nuclear features of ptc and typically extensive vascular invasion is seen minimally invasive fvptc requires full thickness capsular penetration now foci of invasion into but not through the capsule In situations like this level section should be considered to evaluate for complete capsular transgression in deeper levels to be considered evidence of invasion the tumor must have the same cytomorphology as that seen in the main mass widely invasive fvptc here in this photomicrograph invasive growth and histologically characterized by an exclusive or almost exclusive follicular architecture nuclear features of ptc and extensive vascular invasion so for invasion of vessels within the tumor capsule or beyond with intravascular tumor attached to the vessel wall or admixed with fibrin or covered by endothelium is essential foci of 
Vascular invasion should be counted with foci in adjacent vessels counted separately. Tumors floating within a vessel lumen without associated endothelium are not diagnostic. ERG or CD31 IXZ may be used to highlight the vascular endothelium. So to summarize these follicular pattern tumors, when we encounter follicular pattern tumors, what we need to look at is the PTC type nuclear alterations and the invasion. Whether invasion into vessels or through the tumor capsule or into the thyroid parenchyma of a well circumscribed unencapsulated tumors. So if PTC type nuclear alterations are present and invasion is also present, then it becomes a IEFV PTC. If PTC type nuclear alterations are questionable, the invasion is also questionable, then it becomes a well differentiated tumor with uncertain malignant potential. If PTC type nuclear features are present, but invasion is clearly absent, then it is a NIFT P. And if either of these features are absent, it becomes a follicular adenoma. Or if PTC type nuclear features are clearly absent, but you're dealing with a follicular pattern tumor with invasion, then it is a follicular carcinoma. Oncocytic thyroid carcinoma. Here the essential diagnostic criteria is Invasive follicular cell derived neoplasm consisting of oncocytic cells that account for at least 75% of the tumors and absence of papillary thyroid carcinoma nuclei and high grade features. Similar to follicular thyroid glass carcinoma, it is classified as minimally invasive, encapsulated with vascular invasion and widely invasive. High grade thyroid carcinomas. So here there is inclusion of poorly differentiated thyroid carcinoma and differentiated high grade thyroid carcinoma as subtypes. So the diagnostic criteria for high grade follicular cell derived thyroid carcinomas, we need to look at architectural pattern, nuclear features, necrosis, mitosis and convoluted nuclei and anaplastic features. Now, if a given tumor has solid trabecular insular growth pattern with absence of nuclear features of PTC and at least one of the following three features that is mitotic count more than or equal to 3 per 2 mm square, tumor necrosis, convoluted nuclei and clear absence of anaplastic features, then it is called a poorly differentiated thyroid carcinoma. However, if we see papillary, follicular or oncocytic thyroid carcinoma and any of the nuclear features and at least one of these following two features that is mitotic count more than or equal to 5 per 2 mm square and presence of tumor necrosis but no anaplastic features then it qualifies to be called as a differentiated high grade thyroid carcinoma. For better understanding and reporting of mitosis I would recommend all of you to read the paper by Dr. Kri et al. in Modern Pathology, which is readily and freely available. So high-grade follicular cell-derived non-anaplastic thyroid carcinoma in a PDTC can have an insular growth pattern and mitosis as shown in the inset. And a differentiated high-grade thyroid carcinoma here showing follicular pattern tumor and areas of necrosis. So it is in addition to the existing either RAS-like or RAF-like profile, the acquiring of additional mutations. So there is progression associated with additional molecular event, typically mutations in the TPV53, PIK3CA, P10 or TERT promoter mutations give rise to high-grade follicular cell-derived thyroid carcinomas. So a prognostically relevant classification of thyroid carcinoma must take into account differentiation and grade that is mitotic activity and or necrosis. Anaplastic thyroid carcinoma. The essential diagnostic criteria is thyroid malignancy composed of undifferentiated cells with focal features of thyroid follicular differentiation and or a previous differentiation thyroid carcinoma. Desirable diagnostic criteria 
is exclusion of other undifferentiated malignancies in the differential diagnosis. ATC is distinguished from follicular derived carcinoma high grade that we just discussed by marked pleomorphism, lack of any organoid growth pattern, absence of thyroglobulin immunoreactivity in almost all instances. So another thing that I want to tell you, which I had just mentioned earlier is ATC with squamous cell carcinoma pattern. Squamous cell carcinoma was considered a distinct entity or in the previous WHO fourth edition, whereas now it, it is considered as a pattern under ATC. That is because they have similar poor overall survival as conventional anaplastic thyroid carcinoma. So for a diagnosis of ATC squamous cell carcinoma pattern, they should be focused squamous features or they can be completely squamous. Frequently, it has a previous or concurrent differentiated thyroid carcinoma and DRAF V600E mutation. So this is a core biopsy here showing P40 positivity, clear negativity for thyroglobulin and positivity for PAX8 confirming ATC with squamous cell carcinoma pattern. ATCC previous editions, all ATCs were classified as having T4 disease. The T category for ATC now uses the same definitions used for differentiated thyroid cancers. With ATC, intrathyroid disease is stage 4A, gross extrathyroidal extension or cervical node metastasis is stage 4B, and distant metastasis is stage 4C. The thyroid C cell derived carcinomas include medullary thyroid carcinoma. The essential diagnostic criteria is primary non follicular cell derived thyroid tumor with morphologic and immunohistochemical features of neuroendocrine derivation, including expression of calcitonin and or carcinoembryonic antigen. And desirable diagnostic criteria is lack of expression of thyroglobin. What is new to the new edition in MTC is the two-tier consensus grading scheme. So here, it's essential that we count the mitosis for 2 mm square, check the KI67 proliferation index and look for presence or absence of necrosis and grade them accordingly as low grade and high grade. So a mitotic count less than 5 per 2 mm square, a KI proliferative index less than 5%, absence of tumor necrosis is a low grade MTC. And anything more than 5, and presence of necrosis is high grade P MTC. It is essential that we do this grading because it has a significant impact on overall survival, disease free survival, local recurrence free survival and distance, distant metastasis free survival. Mixed medullary and follicular cell derived thyroid carcinoma. The essential diagnostic criteria as the name suggests, is medullary carcinoma and follicular cell derived carcinoma components, which should be intimately intermixed within the same lesion. The two components should be morphologically recognizable and C cell and follicular cell derivation should be proven by appropriate immunohistochemistry as shown here in our case. Moving to salivary gland type carcinomas of the thyroid. This includes mucoepidermal carcinoma, where mucus intermediate and epidermoid tumor cells forming cystic and solid growth patterns are seen and MAM-L2 gene rearrangement may be seen. Secretory carcinoma. This is composed of microcystic, tubular and solid structures with abundant eosinophilic homogeneous or bubbly secretions usually characterized by specific rearrangement of the ETV6 gene. Sclerosing mucoepidermal carcinoma with eosinophilia. This includes epidermal and mucus cells in a background of marked stromal sclerosis with infiltration of eosinophils and lymphocytes and thyroglobulin and paxate are typically negative. Absence of mammal 2 gene rearrangement and BRAF mutation distinguishes it from the mimics. I would like to draw your attention to this entity cribriform morular thyroid carcinoma, which in the fourth edition was considered as a variant of PTC, whereas now it is a distinct entity under tumors of uncertain histogenesis. 
CMTC almost exclusively occurs in young women. Multifocal and or bilateral when associated with familial adenomatous polyposis and secondary to germline APC mutations. Sporadic cases appear as a solitary nodule with somatic mutation resulting in permanent activation of the winch beta ketanin signaling pathway. The essential diagnostic criteria for cribriform modular thyroid carcinoma is a well circumscribed or locally aggressive tumor with predominant complex architecture including cribriform and squamoid moduli with no colloid formation and diffuse nuclear beta ketanin expression. Desirable diagnostic criteria is in cribriform areas, they will be, there will be positivity for TTF1, pan-keratin, ER and PR. The moduli will be positive for CD10, CDX2, CD5 and CK5, but negative for TTF1, ER, PR and lack of pax 8 thyroglobulin in both areas. The cribriform structure lack intervening fibrous stroma and merge with tubular follicles that lack colloid as seen in the photomicrographs here. Aberrant strong nuclear and cytoplasmic beta ketanin staining is the hallmark of this thyroid tumor and BRAF mutations are absent. The diagnosis of CMTC should alert the pathologist and clinician for a possible diagnosis of FAP and initiation of genetic screening. Thymic tumors within the thyroid include thymoma family, spindle epithelial tumor with thymus like elements and thymic carcinoma family, which we can read in the WHO thoracic tumors in detail. Thyroblastoma. Here, the essential diagnostic criteria is primitive thyroid epithelium, small cell blastemal component, mesenchymal stroma with or without rhabdomyoblastic differentiation, absence of conventional thyroid carcinoma component, conventional germ cell component, expression of specific germ cell markers. The desirable diagnostic criteria, TTF1 positivity, pax positivity, thyroglobulin expression within the primitive follicles and presence of minute foci of cartilage. This has essentially been an under-recognized entity probably included previously in malignant thyroid teratoma. The characteristic is the pathogenetic somatic dicer 1 variant detection in thyroblastomas. The common driver mutations and somatic genetic alterations in the tumors that we discussed, let me just quickly take you through. In follicular carcinomas, it is the RAS-like TCGA molecular profile. In papillary carcinomas, it is BRAF V600E-like TCGA molecular profile. High-grade follicular cell-derived non-anaplastic thyroid carcinomas can have either RAS-like or BRAF-like and then acquire additional genetic mutations like I have already described. Anaplastic thyroid carcinoma, mostly they are BRAF V600E-like TCGA molecular profile due to high MAP kinase transcriptional output regardless of the driver mutation. Oncocytic thyroid lesions have mutations of mitochondrial genes that typically encode oxidative phosphorylation complex 1 subunits and genome haploidization with uniparental disomy are their defining molecular features. Tumors of thyroid C cell derivation would have RET and RAS mutations as the predominant drivers, which are detected in up to 80 to 90 percent of the cases. RET mutation is inherited in the germline of patients with MEN type 2A and 2B. C cell hyperplasia is a precursor lesion in patients with familial predisposition. So, this molecular data has led to a better histopathological appraisal, adding to the concept that all features of a tumor histologic as well as genetic have to be taken into account for proper classification. So let's understand the prognosis and prediction of classifying the thyroid tumors. Papillary thyroid carcinomas 
have a 10 year survival rate for stage one disease of almost more than 99% and for stage four, it reduces to less than 50%. Poor prognostic factors include older age at diagnosis, male gender, large tumor size and gross extrathyroidal extension. Invasive encapsulated follicular variant PTC spreads to distant sites often bypassing lymph nodes like follicular thyroid carcinoma. Follicular thyroid carcinoma, the extent of invasion significantly impacts survival. So 40 month disease free survival of 97%, 81% and 45% is seen for minimally invasive encapsulated angioinvasive and widely invasive follicular thyroid carcinoma respectively. The oncocytic carcinoma, the overall survival ranges from near 100% in minimally invasive where there is capsular invasion only to 10% for widely invasive lesions. High grade follicular cell derived non anaplastic thyroid carcinomas, the overall survival at five years in most series is 50 to 70%. Patient age more than or equal to 45 years, gross extrathyroidal extension, tumor size more than 50 mm, and distant metastasis at presentation have been associated with poor outcome. In anaplastic thyroid carcinoma, mortality rate at three to six months is almost 90% but with multimodal therapy and treatment advances and presently with BRAP V600 E mutation testing and the benefit of trametinib, et cetera, the, it, is, it is improving to less than two years. Medullary thyroid carcinoma, five year and 10 year overall survival rates are 75 to 96% and 64 to 91% respectively, depending primarily on disease stage. Mixed medullary and follicular cell derived carcinoma, the clinical behavior is similar to that of conventional medullary thyroid carcinoma. Mucopidomoid carcinomas of the thyroid have excellent outcome. They are indolent. Secretory carcinomas are more, more aggressive than they are other salivary counterparts. Uh, the SMECs, the 40% of patients have regional lymph node metastasis. Long term follow up is needed as recurrences and or metastasis may appear up to 20 years after the original surgery. Cribriform morula thyroid carcinoma overall mortality is 2%. Thymoma generally no recurrence or metastasis is seen after surgical excision. Settle overall survival is 86%. Intrathyroid thymic carcinoma 5 and 10 year survival rates are 90% and 82% respectively. For embryonal neoplasm, that is thyroblastoma, no staging is available. They are highly aggressive with almost 50% patients dying at a median follow-up of 11.5 months. So to conclude, let us summarize the classification. In the new WHO classification, the, there is inclusion of developmental abnormalities, which includes thyroglossal duct cyst and other congenital thyroid abnormalities. Follicular cell derived neoplasms are classified under benign tumors, low risk neoplasms, malignant neoplasms. In benign tumors, we have thyroid follicular nodular disease, follicular thyroid adenoma, follicular thyroid adenoma with papillary architecture and oncocytic adenoma. Low risk neoplasms include NIFTP, thyroid tumors of uncertain malignant potential and hyalinizing trabecular tumor. Malignant neoplasms include papillary thyroid carcinoma with their subtypes, invasive encapsulated follicular variant papillary carcinoma, follicular thyroid carcinoma, oncocytic carcinoma of the thyroid, high grade follicular derived non anaplastic thyroid carcinoma, anaplastic follicular cell derived thyroid carcinoma. Thyroid C cell derived carcinoma includes medullary thyroid carcinoma with a grading system added as a new thing in the new classification. Then mixed medullary and follicular cell derived carcinoma, the salivary gland type carcinomas of thyroid, which include mucoepidermoid carcinoma of the thyroid and secretory carcinoma of the salivary gland type. Under tumors of uncertain histogenesis, we have sclerosing mucoepidermoid carcinoma with eosinophilia and cribriform morular thyroid carcinoma which lacks follicular cell derivation and follows the Wnt beta ketanin pathway and thymic tumors within the thyroid are classified separately. 
embryonal thyroid neoplasms we have thyroid thyroblastoma associated with the dicer one mutations mesenchymal and stromal tumors hematolymphoid tumors germ cell tumors metastasis and genetic tumor syndromes of all endocrine organs are discussed in separate chapters in the new edition with this I want to conclude my session by quoting Professor Pierre Mason, a French Canadian pathologist. No classification is more difficult to establish than that of thyroid carcinomas. Of all cancers, they teach perhaps the greatest lessons of humility to histopathologists. Thank you so much, all of you, for your patient hearing.